Hey, welcome back. This is part two of the weighing of the Astral Radiance set out of a booster box. I decided to make the second video, as always, to reverse engineer and find out why we have such a big discrepancy. And I made a huge discovery. This time, the, the weight of the cards, specific cards, is a lot lower than normal. And even though the code card differential is fixed this time around, another problem lies with the weight of the regular cards. And that's why the heavy packs have the hits. So I'm going to show you what the problem is and why it's so important to keep track of this stuff. Because immediately when I figured out that it was 21 grams instead of the regular 22 gram range, I knew something was off. And my hunch was correct. So I'm going to explain to you why this is such a big problem and how Pokemon once again messed up everything. So we're going to begin with the regular common cards. So regular common cards, again, a regular common card has a circle. So these are commons. So right away, common cards usually weigh 1.85 grams. This is consistent historically. This is how much a regular card should weigh. And again, commons typically weigh less than the specialized, textured, and amongst other cards. Now, some things people ask quite frequently is, what is the weight of the V-Star marker? And as you can see, it's 1.85, which means the V-Star marker weighs exactly in the same range as a regular non-foil card. So that means there is no weight differential between the regular card and a V-Star marker, so they don't make a difference. And since the V-Star marker is in the place of the energy card, it also means that there is no difference. If you get an energy card, it weighs the same as the V-Star marker. So that doesn't change at all. It's a it's something that stays constant. Next up, take a look at the reverse. The reverse hollow this time around is just slightly higher than the regular card. So it's 1.88, which is a lot lower than the, the first time around for Brilliant Stars, as you're going to see. But uh, it weighs anywhere from 1.87 and 1.88 for reverse foils. So there we have it. So now we we'll keep going. Now, this time around, the V Ultra Rares, you see how much higher these uh, Ultra Rares weigh, right? 2 grams, 2.06. That is a lot higher than a regular non-foil card, as you see. And again, it's very consistent. 2.04, 2.06. We're going to take the average, call it 2.05. Whoops, there were two of them. 2.05 is the on average ultra rare V. Make a note of that. Move on to hollow rares. So this time around, hollow rares weigh the same as a energy as well as a non-foil. So for some reason, regular hollow rares, they are in the same range as a non-foil. But that doesn't really matter because nobody cares about regular hollows anyway right so keep going just like brilliant stars the trainer gallery the yellow border non-texture cards they weigh heavy 2.06 so these are what i call the smooth texture they don't have a texture smooth cards they weigh the heaviest out of the bunch and once again it explains why whenever you get one of these it tends to be a heavier pack 2.05 on average. Now, we'll keep going through the ultra rares and we reach the V star. V star is 1.99, which is like two grams, which again, is significantly higher than your regular non-foil cards. Next up, we have a trainer gallery with, a smooth, um, with the uh, textured. So this is why I call a trainer gallery textured. Uh, but you can see it is a little bit lighter than the yellow border cards, um, but it's still two grams, which means it's heavier still. 
Um, same thing with the full art textured. So texture cards are around two grams, give or take. And that's very consistent. As you see, the gold card, card is also two grams. So what do we know? Gold card, full art, textured, uh, they all weigh two grams. Now, radiant card, 1.95, still heavier than a regular non-foil. So overall, so far, all of this stuff we already know, but what is the real problem here? The real problem lies with the uncommon cards, and that's the biggest swing in difference. Because every pack, you will receive three, three uncommon cards. And as you can see, the uncommon cards are 1.57. It's very, very strange because if you look at the uh, symbol, it's a square, right? It's a diamond. The uncommon cards, all of them weigh significantly uh, lighter than your uh, regular common cards. You see that? It's very strange. Extremely strange. Because these you get three of, it makes the pack, the entire pack, weigh a lot lighter. But that's not even the worst part of it. The worst part is the regular rare weighs even less. I don't know how they did this. Why would they do this and how they did this? But look, a regular rare, 1.54. This one, you see this? It has a star, right? This is a regular rare. Regular rare is very, very light. It makes absolute no sense. See, again, it's a regular rare. It's 0.4 grams less than a uh, ultra rare, which makes this extremely high of a differential. Okay, and finally, to reverse engineer and try to figure out why this works the way it does, right? So the wrapper typically weighs 0 0.72 grams. And to reverse engineer how this works, right? Every pack contains one reverse. You have five commons, five commons, Five commons in every pack. So reverse on top of wrapper plus five commons. And then you add your energy card. And then you add the three really broken uh, uncommon cards. This is your baseline. Okay. This is, well, actually, you don't always get a reverse. So you have a baseline pack weight. This is constant. Every pack will contain these as your uh, constants. Then if you add the reverse, right? If you have a reverse card and you add a black bordered code card and you get a full art, this is a typical weight for a black bordered pack, 21.62, right? But what if we did not get an ultra rare. We got a regular rare, which is, where is it? Here we go. This is the regular rare, which is a star. And then you add the white code card because you get white code card. You see how much less that weighs? 21.32. Okay, and then uh, one more example, just to make things consistent. So again, once you add a ultra rare, and then you add the black border code card, and let's say you get another reverse, this is how much it weighs, 21.68. Heavy pack matters, because the uncommon and the regular rare it's just so much lighter, it, it skews the entire pack. So uh, there, that's your answer. That's what the problem is. And now we're going to uh, plug everything back into Excel, into my model. And I'll explain to you by the numbers why this is the way it is. And we're back with the most exciting part of this weighing math breakdown. So after plugging in all of the updated numbers into the previous Excel model, 
On the left, we have the Brilliant Stars booster box. Uh, the first time around when I built the model versus the updated model. So as you can see, there are some clear differences. I've highlighted some of the differences, but feel free to pause and examine all the numbers on your own. But as you can see, the white border previously was extremely heavy, and now it's been fixed. The white border versus black border uh, code card differential has been reduced to a correct amount. So this is the correct amount they want to be in in order to fix and compensate for the weight differential between a hit versus a non-hit because um, normally ultra rares and textured cards weigh 0.13 more than non-holo card. Non-holo card, right? That's how it's supposed to work. But um, this time around, they fixed it, but the problem lies with the uncommon and the rare card. So historically, non-holo cards, all of them, rare, uncommon, common, they all weigh the same thing. It should be this number. But as you saw in my weighing video, you saw that the non-holo commons differ from the non-holo uncommon and rares. In fact, the rare, the regular rares, they weigh the least. You see this? It's crazy because uh, the ultra rare V weighs 0 0.50 grams uh, more than a non-holo. It means half a gram of a difference. That's huge. And we can see what the problem is by plugging all the numbers. Take a look at this. Once you substitute the uh, uncommons with the new uncommon cards, the baseline drops and you see how much of a problem this is. So in the past, all of the booster packs weighed 22 grams on average, but this time around, all of the packs are 21 grams in weight. And that's because we have three uncommons that weigh a lot less. And then the biggest problem is if a regular rare is included in that, it makes it so that four cards weigh on average 1.55 grams. So you see how much of a problem that is, right? A regular rare, you take the addition of a reverse plus a non-hollow plus your uh, baseline and you get the lightest pack out of the bunch. This explains why all of the light packs are 100% guaranteed to be duds because they messed up and made the non-hollow rares weigh even less than they're supposed to be. So there we have it. Pokemon printers uh, go burr and they, they messed up. I, I think they probably, during the uh, production, ran out of the usual stock paper and they decided to use a different type of paper. And that's what happened. Whoever produces the uncommons and the rares, they used a different set of paper and that's what's causing this weight differential. And if you, uh, you know, look back at my model, I basically looked at what the, the different combinations are. So you add reverse plus V star or V max plus your black quarter, black border code card baseline, and you get these numbers. So as you can see, anything that's above 0 0.40 should contain something good. Um, and that also backs up what I found in my booster box because this is my distribution. I went back, plugged in all of the, the numbers in addition to what I pulled, and here we go. All of the ultra rares and Vs fell into the heaviest range. And then the next mid range, you also get the trainer galleries, hollows, full arts, you name it. But once you get to, to the 21.2s, they are all junk. There's zero chance of it being good. Zero. So you can speak with 100% accuracy um, that the regular rares are duds because these weigh significantly less. I don't know what happened, but uh, they tried to fix the problem. They, they broke it again. Um, assuming this might not be a global issue, the biggest determination of whether or not to look for light versus uh, heavy packs it's to look at the pack weight itself. If it's 22 grams, it's not going to be weighable because they faced, fixed the co-card differential. But if you find a booster pack that is 21 grams, get the heavy pack. 
The heavy 21 gram packs contained hits. The light ones are junk. So uh, Pokemon, there you go. I found your issue once again. Hey, hire me. I, I, I can be your consultant. I can fix this problem for you. This is not rocket science. It's just math. But uh, you guys just can't get it right, you know? So then people are still going to continue to weigh these packs. I, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. This was the most insightful thing uh, I found up to this date. It just goes to show you how important it is to understand how things work. Because right away when I noticed that it was 21 grams, I noticed something was off. And yeah, as I was opening my packs, I realized that it's not the light packs that contained hits. It was the heavies because of this thing. So knowledge is power, right? Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.